welcome to our Friday Bible study. As always, we're praying that the Lord has been really good to you, and that despite the way the world is going and the situations of life, uh, God has brought you through another week, to another Friday, and as long as you're alive, living, and breathing, there is potential, possibility that God can work and move and do great and mighty things. It's Prayer Marriage Ministry, I'm James Lanks. I want to welcome you to our Bible study. We pray that by the time we finish, we'll have said something that will be a blessing to you. We're going to do our best to finish out the book of Malachi, the fourth chapter, uh, this, this night. And we're going to de- dive right off into the book of Romans, a very exciting book, one I'm looking forward to uh, studying and, and allowing the Holy Spirit to help us to understand it. Uh, before we study this, these books, we want to open in prayer. We want to believe God for great and mighty things, not only for His ministry and the Bible study, but also for you. Let's pray right now. Precious God, we want to give you praise and honor and glory. I want to magnify your holy and precious name. We find every spirit of hindrance in the name of Jesus Christ. And we ask, Father, that you will touch us. Touch us, bless us, keep us, strengthen us. Please move upon us, Lord, and help us that we will always be aware of what you are doing in our hearts and lives. I'm asking that the Holy Spirit, the teacher, will show up and help us through your word. We ask that you give us proper understanding. And help us, Lord, to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord. Anoint the Bible study as being taped. And when it's aired, it will be a great blessing to the hearers. And we thank you again for allowing us to be able to assemble ourselves and to pray and to call on the name of Jesus. And it's in the holy name of Jesus Christ we ask it. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Closing out the book of Malachi, which as you know was the last uh, prophetic book of the Old Testament before John the Baptist came on the scene crying out those famous words, uh, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And between the end of Malachi and the beginning of, of, of Matthew, it's a period of about 400 years known as the Dark Ages. How much gospel actually went forth during that time is unknown, but I believe that some gospel went forth because the Holy Spirit never left. He remained here. And so we're believing that, that God, yes, am I going to use it? It can stay up there. That's fine. But we believe that the Lord still moved in spite of the great opposition uh, that was faced by those during those times. The, the heading of this is the last prophecy to Judah before Messiah's first advent, his first coming. The coming of Elijah before Messiah's second advent. Verse 5. It says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Spouse Note says the phrase, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet, does not refer to the coming of John the Baptist, who only came in the spirit of Elijah. It actually refers to Elijah the prophet, who was translated about 500 years before the time of Malachi, and who will be sent back to the earth by the Lord in the midst of the coming great tribulation. What, what are some of the reasons why Elijah will, will return during the tribulation period? The last, or the, yeah, the last three and a half years of of the tribulation, yes. Right, he, 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 he's never died. He was translated alive. He was taken up in a chariot of fire. Another reason is for his to preach that which the Lord will give him during the tribulation period. Uh, again, the tribulation period for my, our listeners by the Internet is after the rapture of the church, which, by the way, is soon to occur. It is seven, it's a seven-year period in which the Antichrist, a ruler from the north, I, I, from somewhere in the revived Roman Empire, I believe somewhere in Syria because of the prophetic utterances in Daniel, he will rule for a period of seven years. He will start off in Babylon for three and a half years, and then he will move his headquarters to Jerusalem for the remaining three and a half years. So Elijah will be one of the two, and uh, Cedric said the other Enoch would be the other man. He, they are, these are the only two recorded men in the word of God who have not died. They were taken. It says Enoch was not for God took him. He walked with God and God took him. He, he was translated and he has never, never died, but he has been translated. Hallelujah. At that time, he and Enoch of Revelation chapter 11 verse 3 would be used of God mightily as they prophesy in Jerusalem. The ministry will last for the entire to the last three and a half years of the Great Tribulation. Both will be killed by the Antichrist at the end of the Great Tribulation when they shall have finished their testimony. It's very key. 
The Antichrist will be only allowed to kill these two great prophets of God after they have finished their testimony. However, after three and a half days, they will be resurrected and raptured. It's going to be what a sight. Yes. Well, yeah, in the sense that, that they have a mission. And just like we as God's church, God protects us. As long as we are, are consistent and continue in that mission of life and trusting in God, God will keep us so we will supernaturally keep us so that we may carry out our, our function. And yes, Eli, e, e, Elijah and Enoch will be, of course, supernaturally protected by the Lord. But I don't want to give any indication or hint that they are greater protected than, than, than we are. I mean, God watches over all of his church. If, if he did not, we'd all be in trouble. I mean, God has supernaturally... Yeah? Plus, it's not recorded in the Bible that they would die or anything like that either. What do you mean? Enoch and Elijah. You mean before they finished that course? Yeah, it's not recorded like any of them are going to die. Right, but that's not stamped. I mean, we, we still, they still have choice, just like we do. But God knew in his, in his omniscience, his all-knowing, that they would run their race. Just like God has a lot of confidence in us, in the midst of our failures, God still got confidence in us that we're going to run our race. You know, that may seem incredulous or amazing to us, but God has confidence that we're going to finish this race. Yes, sir. Do they, have this, uh, they, have do they now? Yes, they do. Yes. They, they're going to be, they're gonna be human. human just like we're human. Just like when Jesus came from glory. <laughs> he took on a, a human body, a human form. Hmm, nothing different. Nothing different at all. Praise the Lord. I, I don't know if I was in heaven. I, I think I'd be a little bit, you know, disappointed I had to leave. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. But, but, you know, they, they don't think like we think. I mean, they, they're submissive to the will of the Lord. Whatever you want, God... Whatever you want, God, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah, that, that's what we say. That's why we're not up there yet. <laughs> As John the Baptist prepared a way for the first advent of Christ, these two, Elijah and Enoch, prepared a way for the second coming of Christ. The phrase, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, addresses the coming great tribulation, and more specifically, the second coming. It will be a great day for God's people and a dreadful day for his enemies. Yes. No, 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 no. The, the second coming is when he actually physically comes back and his feet touch the earth. Yes. During uh, 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 the rapture of the church, his feet will not touch the earth. We will meet him in the air somewhere between. You understand that? Those who are already in glory, yeah, we'll, yeah, we the glorified saints will come back with him. We'll be riding on white horses. Revelation tells us that we will come back with him. But what about the other people who did not and accepted him after the tribulation and everything else? What, where are they going? Well, th as we study in the book of Revelation, they're, they're, they're going to be into the millennial reign, the thousand years after the tribulation. There are going to be a number of people which are known as natural people that will actually live during those thousand years. During the thousand years, the gospel will go forth. There will be people who will accept Jesus as Lord and Savior during the millennial reign. It will be a time of, of peace and joy as the earth has never seen until uh, Adam and Eve were first created on this earth. Um, during the tribulation period, there will be a number of raptures where people actually... A rapture, you won't find a rapture in the Bible, but rapture is a, is a term that means caught up. And you find Bible, you find caught up in, in the word of God. And, and so, as I say, throughout the tribulation period, there will be a number of, of raptures where saints, and you find what is known as the tribulation saints, where they say we overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. You'll find them under the sea of glass sea of faces of uh, an immeasurable number of people, a uh, uh, innumerable number of people that are actually in this uh, sea of glass that have been raptured. But those who have rejected Christ at his second coming will, will actually be, be cast into hell, awaiting the final judgment to be cast in the lake of fire. 
who have, who have, who have actually accepted the mark of the beast, who have